Watch this. I've got a signal on channel 1, and when I probe it, the signal changes. Let's take a look at this probing mystery. Hi, I'm Allie, and today we're going to look at why this is happening. This crazy signal change is caused by probe loading. And with probe loading, you run into two potential challenges. First, the signal on your device can change. Second, what you're seeing on your scope screen can be far different from what's actually existing on your device. Let's take a look. On channel one, we have a fast rising edge that's going through a 50 ohm fixture. This fixture allows me to both probe the signal and run it through to the scope. We've seen that when we probe our signal with this passive probe, it changes. And this could cause serious problems with your device. If you're working in tight margins or you care about signal integrity, this could make or break your design. To make things worse, the second effect of probe loading could come into play. The signal that you see on your screen could be far different from the signal as it exists on your device. Let's see what the signal looks like through the passive probe that we've been using. The yellow trace is the signal as it exists on your device, and the green trace is what your oscilloscope sees through the passive probe. Clearly these signals don't match, and this can be really misleading if you're making measurements on and evaluating a signal that looks nothing like the signal as it exists on your device. Every probe has a probe loading effect. Our challenge is to minimize this effect by choosing the right probe. Clearly, this probe is not the right choice for the signal. So let's try an active probe that has lower loading. When I probe the signal with my active probe, we can see two things. First, we see that the yellow trace hasn't really changed when I probe the signal, which means that the probe loading effect is negligible. And second, we can see that the blue trace looks almost identical to the yellow trace, which means that the signal you're seeing on screen is a true representation of the signal as it exists on your device. So why is there such a difference between a passive probe and an active probe? Yes, they're different bandwidths, but the dominating factor here is the probe loading effect. So what exactly is probe loading? It all comes down to the design of your probe. Every probe is designed with a resistance at the tip in order to minimize their effect on your circuit. This resistance essentially separates your probe from your device, but there's also an inherent capacitance in all probes. As we get higher in frequency, the capacitive effect is stronger than the resistive effect. The capacitance is dominating the impedance of the probe. With too high of a capacitance, your scope is going to steal energy from your device and essentially filter out the high frequency components of your signal. It could also cause an impedance mismatch. These high frequency components are being filtered out of the signal on our device and are showing up on the oscilloscope screen. Because the capacitance of the passive probe is much higher than that of the active probe, the passive probe's loading effect is significant, and the active probe's loading effect is minimal. So what do you do about this? You make sure to use a probe with appropriately low capacitance. Also, some high-end scopes use DSP to ensure that the signal you're seeing on screen matches the one on your device. To learn more, download the free probe training kit that's linked in the description and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Allie, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.